And then you have this nice little chart here that I put together for you guys. <coughs> so, um, again, they're all, they're all talents views. Um, depending on what area we're trying to look at, okay, the only thing that changes is where your central ray is directed. Okay, so for the occipital bone, two and a half a bunch above the glabella. Okay, so we're making our way down. Occipital, TMJ, two inches above. Psychomatic arch, one inch above the glabella. And now the mandible is at the glabella. And only the mandible has an increased angle. The mandible has a, a steeper angle. So if you look at, if you go in your preview, they're all pretty much between 30 to 37. Here, because we're looking at the condyloid, it's a little bit more steeper. Up here. I'm, I'm sorry, here. Okay, dokes. <laughs> I laugh every time I see this. Say, ah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the axial lateral oblique. Axial lateral oblique. Patient is in a true lateral position. You start off in a true lateral position, okay? Putting their mid sagittal plane, true mid, -sag their mid sagittal plane, parallel from with the image receptor. From there, you're going to turn their head towards the affected side just a little bit. What's that word? A skosh? I guess so. Just a skosh. <laughs> Okay, you're gonna turn it just a skosh. Okay. <laughs> Which I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with smidge. Okay. Well, Har says it's a real word. Just a smidge. Okay. So 15 degrees towards the affected side. All right. Central ray is gonna be angled 15 degrees caudally to enter one and a half inch superior. Superior to the EAM, upside EAM. Okay? We're looking at TMJs. Are we looking at the entire mandible? Nope. Okay, we're not looking at the entire mandible, we're looking at the TMJ. So, collimate, it's going to be a, a small collimation to the area of interest. We take a shot, boom. Take another image receptor, open up your mouth, boom. Nothing changes. Patient doesn't have to move, they can stay in that same exact position. Tube stays in the exact position, except they're just opening up their mouth. Okay? This is your modified law method, the modified law. Which TMJ are we visualizing? Closest to the other. Side closest, okay? So again, it's the side closest. What is the whole purpose of this angulation? Why are we angling this? Yeah, because remember, your jaw is like this, so we're trying to remove the superimposition. So we're trying to separate one TMJ from the other TMJ. Okay. So the TMJ closest to the image receptor will be demonstrated. We do it both open and closed mouth. You can see the convoy here, and here's the fossa right here of the temporal bone. Okay. So we, we do it both open and closed mouth for comparison. Here we have a dislocated TMJ. Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, you see anything funny about this image? The motion. Motion. Is it is it motion? You see motion here, but this looks in focus, right? But everything else is blurred out. You guys remember? Is it a tomograph? Yeah. yeah. This is a tomogram of the TMJ. Okay. Everything else around it is in motion, but whatever is set at that fulcrum point. Okay, stays, stays in focus. <laughs> now it looks like it's really in pain. <laughs> All right, so here, if they have a dislocated jaw and they can't <laughs> open up your mouth, it's don't okay. force them to do it, okay? All right, here's your axial lateral TMJ. Now here, patient is in a true lateral position, no rotation, no tilt, nothing. It's only going to be a, an angulation of 30 degrees 
towards the feet, 35 degree hollow angle. Central ray enters a half an inch anterior and two inches superior, so half an inch anterior and two inches superior to the upside EAM. We do it open mouth, we do it closed mouth. Okay. Any questions here? This is the Schuler method. So true lateral position with approximately 30 degree angulation towards uh, collar angle. What's, I the, say towards the, what's the difference between using one or the other? Nothing. Just depends on what. It's just it. Well, well, with the steeper angles, you're going to cause a little bit more distortion. Okay. Because again, steeper angles causes elongation of the anatomy, so there's going to be slight distortion. But when we are doing TMJ, you say, well, what's the difference? Well, we're not doing one or the other. When you're doing TMJ, you're doing both. You're doing both the modified, okay? You're doing this. And that one. Okay? And you're doing this. It's part of the series. So DM, and so if you think about it, there are a lot of, although there are two, okay, you might end up with four, maybe six views because you're doing open mouth, closed mouth. Okay? <clears throat> so... Okay, um, so here we have TMJ closed uh, close mouth of the Schiller's method. You can see the convoid within the fossa. Here we have open mouth, so it does move anteriorly and slightly uh, inferiorly in an open mouth. So we, again, we do it for comparison. And then here's your uh, tomogram version of it. Okay. So patient is in a true lateral position and we just do a clean sweep. Uh, we do both open and open and closed mouth. Okay. <coughs> All right, questions? Tomograms, again, uh, comparison for both closed and open. We have three different views here because we're doing we're changing the fulcrum in different levels. So one at the middle of the TMJ, and then we'll do one above, and we'll do one below our, our fulcrum. Has anybody observed a, t uh, a tomo we yet? We don't have one at the hospital. Yeah. yeah. They took it out. Yeah, they should bring it back. Yeah, they got CT. <laughs> but they're finding out, again, that a lot of these CT procedures is uh, putting out a lot of uh, exposure, and especially if it's around the eyes or the thyroid. That's a lot of exposure these guys are getting. Okay, any questions? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, close this off with uh, sinuses. You guys know the lateral view. You guys know the PA Caldwell, right? You guys know the waters, right? And you know the SMV. And the last one here is an open mouth waters. It's basically just the waters with an open mouth. And each of these will focus on one of the four sinuses. <laughs> So things to consider, okay, we want to use, uh, again, all these views are the same, but now we're looking at the sinuses. So what does that mean for our technical factors? It's going to be low. Okay, it's going to be low because the sinuses are air filled, right? Another thing that you want to take into consideration is you, most of the stuff that we talked about here, and I'm sure you guys are practicing this out now, is you're not using manual factors, are you? A lot of you guys are using AEC. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to use AEC here because when you're using your AEC, the unit is detecting bone. Okay. So it's going to just detect. It's going to adjust your images accordingly to penetration of bone. So you may get an image that's overexposed. So you don't want to use AEC. We want to use manual technique, and we're going to use low technique to visualize sinuses. Why am I spitting all over myself? <laughs> You don't see it. Just keep, I know, but I can feel it. Keep it to yourself, dude. <laughs> Chris, you can feel it. <laughs> I'm like my Sea World over here. Dude. Are, are we okay? <laughs> All right. So, and we do it in an upright position. Why? Air to evaluate what and what. Air and fluid levels. Okay. Here we go. Something. Okay, lateral sinus. 
lateral sinus, okay? We don't need to include the cranium in here. We're just looking here, right? These are where your sinuses are. So call me to the area of interest. I don't want to see jaw. You shouldn't be seeing the top of your cranium, okay? Just focusing here, okay? Central ray is going to be between the outer canthus and the EAM. Ooh, does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same as what? Lateral facial bones. Lateral mm -hmm. facial bones. It's lateral sinuses. Only difference is the technical factors. Okay? So this is the best view. This may be a test question. This is the best view to evaluate all the sinuses. The best view to evaluate all the sinuses. So all four sinuses are demonstrated. The cranium is uh, cranium not rotated or tilted. And again, to evaluate for true lateral is we're looking for just one single mandible. Okay. Orbital roof should be superimposed. Right? And then the we didn't mention this on the other one, on the other slides, but your orbital ridges should also be as one. Okay, and then your frontal, uh, frontal anterior wall, I'm sorry, the maxillary wall and the uh, on the uh, maxillary bone should also look like one. So that's how you evaluate for any type of rotation or tilt. So we're looking at mandible, we're looking at the roofs, we're looking at the ridges, we're looking at the, the anterior wall of the, the maxillaries. Okay. And then PA Caldwell with sinus. So what's different from this and the other PA Caldwell that we've seen in the past is that you can, if you use a wall well, unit, bless you. Yeah. Are you dying over there? <laughs> <laughs> that was a sad thank you. <laughs> so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to place the OML, OML to be perpendicular with the image receptor. Um, there is a version where they use a tilt on the wall unit because what they're trying to achieve here is they're trying to get the maxillaries as close to the image receptor as possible. Otherwise, what you do is just put them in a straight, you know, PA and just do your um, 15 degree angulation towards the feet. So this is just a variation. Instead of them, again, changing the angle of their x-ray tube to be 15 degrees, okay, instead of doing this, what they're doing is, this is perpendicular, okay, oh, I'm sorry, line lining up with the uh, OML, and all they're doing is changing the tilt of the board 15 degrees. That's the only difference. So again, instead of central ray, they're just tilting the board 15 degrees. Okay. So, P. Caldwell, what are we, putting, what are we looking at here? Frontal. <coughs> okay, looking at frontal, but frontal what? Sinuses. Frontal sinuses, okay? So, P.A. Caldwell is, uh, best demonstrates the frontal and ethmoid sinuses. Okay, both frontal and ethmoid. Petrus ridges, if you get a properly positioned P.A. Caldwell, Petrus ridges should be located where? Bottom third. The Bottom orbits. third. So, is this view projection good for looking at maxillary sinuses? No. No, because the petrous ridges are over the maxillary sinuses, right? So lower third of the orbits, but it's filling up the maxillaries. You can't see it. So what would be best then for visualizing the maxillary sinus? Waters. Ta-da. OK. What is our baseline? What baseline? MML. So MML, perpendicular with the image receptor. Okay, central ray is going to exit the acanthion. Same, again, same view, same method, same everything. All we're doing is we're just decreasing our technical factors. See how easy this is? No. Piece of cake. <laughs> nope. Okay, so the maxillary signs. Now, here's the petrous ridges, and they are demonstrated way below the maxillaries. Okay, now, this view, again, if I ask you a question, which view is the best? Uh, which view, which position, which projection is best for evaluating the maxillary? You're going to tell me it's water. This, right? Okay. Now here too is going to be a little hint of what's S? Sphenoid. Your sphenoid, but you can't see it because of your teeth. Transoral. Okay. So then what we will do to look at the sphenoid is have them open up their mouth, and we're looking at the sphenoid through the open mouth. 
I saw Donnie do it, I saw Renee do it, I saw Nick do it, everyone's opening up their mouth. Okay, all right. So we would do a, a transoral, open mouth waters to evaluate the spleen through the open mouth. And uh, I'll show, show you guys that here in a little bit. SMB, okay. Uh, IOML, uh, per, uh, parallel with the image receptor. Central ray is going to be directed uh, between the angles of the mandible. This is very similar to the skull that we discussed two weeks ago. Same old same, okay. And now we are looking at, this isn't good for, you, you can't really see the maxillaries because of superimposition. This is good for evaluating your ethmoid and your sphenoid. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Okay. Ethmoid is Mickey Mouse. Sphenoid is down here. I'll be here. Right below the Mickey Mouse. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Questions. Now here's your transoral. So this is a waters. Now, in doing this waters, well, first you want to clean up the board, right? <laughs> opening up their mouth, right. yeah, this is just dirty and nasty, okay. <laughs> so clean up the board. Is it just wrong? The, the key here, the key in doing a, an open mouth waters is you want to you want to position them in the waters position first, closed mouth. Closed mouth. So the mental meatal line is going to be perpendicular with the image receptor. If you do it while their mouth is open, <laughs> All right, now you got to do this. Extend it even more. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So you position their MML in closed mouth, and then without them moving their head too much, now you have them open it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So MML perpendicular to the image receptor through the open mouth, or, uh, a beam is exiting the acanthion. And now you should be able to see the sphenoid uh, sinus demonstrated through the open mouth. Okie dokes. Yes. Oh, sweet. Okay. So let's just look at this real quick. Mm -hmm. So identify the repeatable error in radiograph A. Motion. It's not, it's, it's rotation. Yeah. So you have to see one, two. One, two. One, two. And then over here, you can see that you've got one, you've got one, and you've got one. Okay, which demonstrates, uh, which demonstrates one or more repeatable errors, A or B? So this is a PA waters. PA waters. <clears throat> well, A, it looks like the ridges are more in the maxillary sinuses. Yeah, so right? here are your sinuses right here, and here are your ridges. So you're not really seeing the, the apex of the maxillaries, and you can't see it over there. It says one. It says more than more than one. Rotation. What's that? Rotation. Or more. Rotation. Oh yeah, rotation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not, so distance from here to here. Is this, yeah. Okay. For this rotation. Yeah. Okay. What's wrong with the technical factors too? It's, it's washed out, right? Underexposed. Uh, if we're doing facial bones, it should be high contrast, not low contrast, right? It should be more black and white. Okay. <clears throat> So this is what we were talking about earlier, uh, Ken. This, this is a good, this is a properly positioned SMB because the bottom of the jaw is superimposed over the frontal bone. Here, okay, you can, you can still see nasal septum up here. You're seeing frontal bone. And then what happens here is because of this, your sphenoid and your ethmoid are not really free and clear. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you're not really getting a good superimposition or under, or what do you call it, an inferior superior view of the jawline. Okay, so it looks a little bit distorted here, and this one looks more, more better. There's so a that one, there. for A, you'd have to tilt it back more, right? Yeah, you have to tilt it back more to bring the, the jawline up. up. Right. Okay. Which radiograph demonstrates a positioning error, A or B? A. 
A. Right, so it's not in the lower it outer needs to be quadrant. Over here. It's more in the middle. So what do we need to do to get this over here? What do we do yesterday, Chris? So we have to do more of a rotation, right? So yeah. we're gonna have them turn the head more towards the uh, affected side, bringing this over here. Okay. And then I don't even know what's up with this one. This is completely wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. <laughs> you can't even see. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Wrong, wrong, yeah, wrong. Yeah, are we missing something in B? Mm -hmm. Optic frame. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where it is. It's right on the bone. Where? Right there. Well, maybe not. The where you start pointing, I'll tell you where it is. <laughs> <laughs> right there? No, no, no. 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 Towards the outer. Right. You're right. Oh. My right? Yeah. Going towards you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my right? Keep going through. Keep going through. Keep going through. Keep going through. Right there, down, 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 Tilt back. Exactly. Tilt their head up. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Uh, which is re which uh, demonstrates a repeatable error, A or B? Mm -hmm. This is an open mouth waters. Uh, I'm going to say A. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So where where should the petrous ridges be? Way down. Uh, way down. Okay. Way down. And then I think also you guys maybe rotation. What you say? Not enough what? <laughs> yeah, that's your axial right there. Yeah. That's, it's too much water. This is an open mouth waters. So again, waters, waters, petrous ridges should be below the maxillary sinuses. <coughs> so the apex of the sinus is down here. Your ridge is up here. So we need to bring it below. Okay. Those are braces, right? Okay. Uh, two repeatable errors present in radiographs A and B. <laughs> well, B. I like B. Do you guys like B? Is there an What's on the artifact? Well, open, open, yeah, they, they crack the head open. <laughs> so it looks like they may have had some kind of uh, brain surgery. Yeah, these are all, su these are all sutures. Oh. You can see the cracks in the, the crack in the head. No, it's, the right, yeah. it's, it's, it's also a suture in the back. Like this is just being, it's just in the back side. Uh, so then there's no air? There's rotation. There's rotation. There's not, this is supposed to be a waters. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's definitely rotation. Yeah, here's your sinus right here, and here's your ridge, ridge, ridge is right in the middle. So there's rotation, not enough extension. And then, Three. There are three repeatable errors. <coughs> okay, let's start with one. Okay, so it's not back enough. So again, the key here is we're trying to get what parallel with what? The jawline. IOML. Oh, parallel, parallel with, with the IR. interceptor, right? And we have rotation. There's three errors. Did they cut something off? I think it's tilt, I think there's not enough extension and there's rotation. So that was two. Can anybody come up with a third? If you come up with a third, I'll give you a point. <laughs> what did you already say? <laughs> <laughs> there's three repeatable errors. I don't know what the third one is. So there's not enough extension, there's rotation. Collimation. What did they cut off? The dark panel? You can't, you can't see the condyles. You can't see the uh, metal. You're supposed to see the... Yeah, yeah. Any, any better answers? Is that an acceptable answer, though? I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a little bit more... You can't see the ethmoid <coughs> sinuses very well. Well, yeah, I guess it has something to do with this. So, yeah, so it has something to do with the position. 
Yeah, you can see Mickey Mouse for sure. All right. Um, I'm just going to skip it. I, I can't tell. Okay, uh, demonstrates repeatable errors A or B. Which is better, A or B? B is better. Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. B is better? Yeah. Okay, I, I agree too. B is better. All right. We're not done. What? We're not done. It's early. Oh, I know. What, what else are you lecturing on? We're done with lecture. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we're done with lecture.